it was a Monday morning, I'm at work and I get a phone call from Roland asking like, hey, am I available to go through to the Tankwa? I'm like, hmm, I'm at work, so not really. And he says there's been heavy rains over the weekend with a lot more rain expected. vessel from the Tanqua Patsal, the bar owner, uh, has his car's fallen down or sunk down to the chassis. He's asked if we can bring him some, some supplies and to go rescue his vehicle or tow out his vehicle because his vehicle is stuck and that's the only vehicle or the other vehicles on the other side of the little new river that started because of the rain and so they can't get supplies, they're out of supplies, the food and things like that. So I told Roland, okay cool, give me an hour. I go from work, I collect some supplies I need, I pack my camping gear, we literally had an hour. Packed everything in our cars, uh, met at the Terrain Tamer HQ in Cape Town, uh, three of us met there, so it's me, Roland from My Life in Africa, and Gareth from, or Gareth, Gareth with his Ford. We all came together, and then us three uh, mission through to the Tankwa. Uh, we had all our supplies with us, our own supplies, our camping gear, and some extra supplies we would drop off, some extra fuel, um, and all our recovery gear we had with us, we also had to take with because we didn't know what the situation was there. We only had a few pictures. So us three head out towards Sirius direction. We get to Sirius, we do our last fill up. It's been raining the entire time we've been driving. And then we start heading in towards the Tankwa. We did not even hit the tar, oh, we did not even hit the gravel road yet. We're still on the tarmac pass section, uh, even before the downhill piece into the Tankwa that long steep uphill, just over that, at the top of that little copy, if I can say it that way. We already hit our first obstacle. There has been landslides that come down. We come into the road and there's just a queue of trucks standing. So we pass the trucks and we just see this landslide that has come down across the road. Um, there was a dead cow lying in the road and then just big boulders in the road with dirt all over it. The road is basically gone or you can't see the road for a long stretch. Luckily, most of the boulders have been cleared out and there is a track through. Someone has been through it before us. So we make our way through, past the trucks, make our way over. I think there was three landslide sections like that where we had to cross. But we make our way across. I think it's at the second one, we had a Range Rover Evoke, uh, who was one of the farm owners there that wanted to follow us in uh, and help him to get to his farm to see if his farm's okay. Because there has been a lot of water that's come down and the herd of floodings and dams have broken and the Ulifans River, which runs through the Tankwa, and the Tankwa River is all in heavy flood. So he said, cool, we'll assist him. So he's following us. So after the landslides, we're heading and we just see this like ocean of water, an uh, ocean river basically, covering half of the valley on our right, just flowing into towards the Tankwa. So we're following this, we just see this, like it's through the farmyards, there was a farmhouse standing and the water just surrounded the farm and it's just going straight through everything. You cannot stop water. We get to the first gravel section of the Tankwa and on the right hand side is all these pylons and they're just covered in water. It literally looks like a massive river going through there, which is usually dry. You usually do not see a river there and it's now flowing over through the pylons. The whole section of the little valley is now filled with water. We get to that little tar section in the Tankwa. Those of you who know the Tankwa will know where I am. That little tar section before the first piece of gravel is a small little, like a kilometer long tar section between the little houses. And at the end of the tar section, we just see this rapid going over the road. So there's been this, the river that's come down has now gone across. This is where it's crossing the road. So the river came through the valley and is now crossing the first tarmac off of the second gravel section where we have to get into the Tankwa at that crossing it is now literally a gigantic river flowing over this road and it's, it's made rapids, big, big, big rapids. So we drive our cars as close as we can to where we can see the tarmac ends, you can see the water drop off. So we drive till there, our wheels are a bit, are just about in the water, about that much in the water. Okay, update. So this is our first obstacle we got to where we can't pass. Like it's, it's impossible to pass here. The water is just gushing down the whole road. The road's washed away. So I walked down and now Gareth is walking down. But as we were driving, we saw a dam on the right hand side of us with a damn wall broken. So we we're like, oh look, this damn wall has broken. And then we got here and we've been standing here for about half an hour. And when we got here, our vehicles were just standing there was in the water. We were about ankle deep in the water and we stopped there because we could see where the end of the road ended. And we've been here for about half an hour and the water has now receded about 
a few meters, a few, yeah, 10, 20 meters of the receded already and it's already gone down. I mean, right here the water was flowing all over and now it's just in the ditches. So we assume, or we're thinking that it's the damn wall that broke and that's what caused this flood to happen right here, right now. Because we did hear of people going to the Pastel already yesterday um, and it didn't rain that much on our way here for this amount of water to come down. So we are assuming that it's the dam that burst and that's what's caused, caused this flash flood to come through here and block our road. So we're going to wait like another half an hour to see if the water settles, if we can manage to find our way down, to see if we can drive, like we'll have to 4x4 four four our way down. Um, but we first need to wait for the water to settle before we can attempt that. I think we stood there for about 45 minutes to an hour. We stood there and then most of the water has cleared. It was quite fascinating to see how quickly the water receded. But what we later found out is there was a dam that burst. So all the water that filled over the weekend of rain, plus the extra water that flowed in from the mountain on this Monday while raining, caused the dam to burst. And then that, we assume, that is what caused this flood in front of us now, was the dam that burst, all that water that just came rushing through at once. Nevertheless, we make our way through. Roland's leading the pack. We find our way through. It's not too soft mud. We make our way through and we head into the Tankwa. At the crossing that heads towards um, Taush Rafir side or to in, uh, Infadouin game farm, there the river is coming strong over there. Luckily we don't have to go that direction, um, but you cannot. It would be impossible at that stage of time. So we head straight into the Tankwa. We go past Swartkorp's guest farm. We can see the entrance is completely washed away. As we're going down, it's not far. The road is it's just water everywhere. We At one point, I think we drove about three kilometers in the road but it has now become a full-on flooded river we're probably about half a wheel depth in this river just driving down uh, the water is flowing faster than we can drive because all the topsoil has washed away it's just super rocky underneath now but we still make our way through we were doing good on time every now and then we'd have like a few puddles of water we'd take it slow nothing too serious some deep ish bits but nothing too bad the only place we got stuck is about i'd say three kilometers from the pot stall there was some water coming over. Are you down, Roland? G, you gonna recover or must I do it? Uh, this is just not good, G. Must I recover? Right, so I got stuck here. There. <laughs> now Pierre's gonna go. And he's not deflated his tires. So we're gonna see if he if he makes it. Uh, let me, there he goes. Adios Pierre, let's go this way. There you go. That's how it's done. Bit more speed. <laughs> so now we're gonna speed up and we're gonna go through there. We saw how it was done. Now we're gonna get our three vehicles in and out. We also had another trooper join us. He joined us, he found us while we were waiting for the water. He also had a call to come in to bring supplies. He had roofing supplies for one of the farm houses which, which roof blew off. They had insane crazy winds the night before, like hurricane speed winds with rain coming down and they just ripped the roof of the one house. So he has housing supplies or roof supplies with him to take into the putt stall. It wasn't much further than we reached the putt stall. Like I said, there was water everywhere. We drove to the entrance at the crossing, the T-junction for the putt stall. We probably about bumper deep through the water there. The Tanko putt stall sign is just floating in the water next to us. And the Tanko putt stall is where we would see ourselves for the night. That would be our base for the night. Uh, we, it was already dark the last like 10 kilometers we drove in the dark so we did not uh, we did not want to attempt the last bit of mud and water in the pitch black uh, we had no idea what was ahead of us so we thought okay cool we'll sleep in the putt stall so we made our camp in the putt stall that night we slept there and then the next morning we would attempt the rest <laughs> We 
came over this bridge yesterday and it was fine, there was no water. And now the rescue vehicle that was there that wanted to head back, uh, I was scared they were going to get stuck down the one hole we got stuck at last night, so I just came to go check on them. And while it seems like the water has risen, so now we are actually stuck as well because the only way is out is by the green sign up there or carrying on on this road. And if we can't cross this, this road, then we are also stuck in here now. So it seems we are also stranded at the moment, but that's fine. We have to spend the day here to rescue a vehicle and to take some supplies to the farmhouse. And if they had 40 k's up towards Calfinia side to go help uh, restore a house there, put a roof on the house there that's been blown off. So we've got a day to wait to, for it to go down. But as I'm standing here, the water's actually getting closer to me. So yeah, we'll see if we can get back tomorrow. The footage and the content shared does not do justice how bad and how much water actually came through the Tankwa. It was incredible to see. Sad, but incredible to see. It was, it is like unreal. It is nothing we've seen before. It was in full flood. But anyway, like we get back to the putt stall and we mission off towards Vessel's house through deep water. We know it's drivable as there has been people walking it, so we know the depth of it. But we drive through and it is deep and muddy. But we get our way through, we go to the farm, we're on the farm, we're literally driving again in rivers of the road is now a river. We're in, we just keep driving and we get to, we can see a Vessel stuck patrol standing in the distance and we get to a point where it becomes super slashy. Yeah, you're gonna be in a hole. is down it's up to the like running boards in sand and then the water above that the water is just like touching the, or like just on the edge of the door the front bumper is in the water the number plates in the water so we survey the area we decide we're trying to see what we can do the problem is and what a lot of people don't understand uh, is the video footage is only showing a narrow perspective of what we could see as we're walking there the ground looks hard or it looks muddy but it looks hard-ish you walk, you find you just it's slushy, it's muddy. The next step you give, you literally knee deep in mud. You just go sink down into knee deep mud, and the next step is up high again. So there's these random holes, these random deep mud sections, which from the surface level you can't see, but as you walk it, as you put pressure on it, as a human you sink in. Just imagine what a three-ton car or a two and a two-ton car would do in that mud. So we survey the area, we're trying to figure out how we can get further. We end up carrying some of the supplies from where we left our cars. It's about, I don't know, 600 kilometer walk. We carry the supplies to the house. Now we're standing there deciding what to do. We have our recovery gear here, but we can't get close enough. If you don't stay on one specific little path, as soon as you go off that path, you will sink down, which we learned. But I decide to, I walk from the hard, because I, let me explain. He has a dam behind his house and that dam has overflowed causing a river to start form on the one side of his house where it's usually on the back of his house is now coming past the front of his house and he drove from the putt stall he tried to drive home and then just caught him got himself caught in this deep mud section this is the section where on the right of the patrol you could walk and it was hard ish but as soon as you walk on the left of the patrol you literally sink knee deep in the mud i'm not even joking it's this slushy mud you just go down knee deep so he ended up by unluckily he caught that hole in the water and in the mud which he couldn't see the hole he drove into it and then he got himself stuck and in the attempt to get out the mud ended up in everywhere it's in the chassis it's in the wheels it's in the brakes it's in the clutch um, so trying to get himself out he burned the clutch out or the mud got into the clutch and it just ruined it so the car had no drive the car was completely dead you could start it but you could put it in any gear you wish it just not did not do anything so we're standing there trying to survey this situation, trying to figure out how we could get his car out. And it was just near impossible. As soon as you go off that hard track, which I walked and I found the two spurs, which is sort of doable. You still have this much of just slush mud, but below it, it's sort of compact of what it feels at least. So I survey a scouter route and then I told Roland them, okay, I'm going to attempt to cross it. As soon as you're in the water, the water sections is fine because there's no 
loose mud and sediment. It's hard, compact sand under the, under the water. But in front of the patrol, there's a, probably about a 10 meter stretch of, of water a river basically now where we have to get across and on the other side of that the hard is hard compact ground but to get there we have to cross probably about a 200 meter stretch of soft mud and not knowing what it is underneath the mud if there's holes if the car's going to sink nothing so i told roland okay i walked a route i solidly walked a route which i think is doable i must just keep foot flat keep momentum going and just see if i can get it through if i get stuck i get stuck so i get in my car I walked my exact route, so I pinpoint my exact route, go over some of the bushes, go right at the patrol, I have to hug the patrol, because um, that's where the hardest route is, and try and aim for the bushes. I know it's not nice to drive over the Tankwa bushes, but in the, or off the track actually in the Tankwa, but in this case we had no choice. There was no roads left, everything's been washed away on his farm. Um, and if we aim for the bushes, that's where the harder soil is, so it would help us just to gain traction to get through. I just bomber through I'm I think I was low range first I think I was low range second gear and I just foot flat the car is high revs I just keep my foot flat at, foot flat keep the momentum going and I managed to bust my way all the way through the at the patrol there's this levee of mud or this little wall of mud I had to break through which was about half a wheel depth but I managed to get my front wheels through through that piece and then my front wheels grabbed the hard traction on the in the water in the sand and then I pulled my way through so I got through that, now I'm on the other side. So the other two decide to use the same track as me and they managed to get their way through. Same technique as me. They managed to get through. So now we're on the hard swirl, the opposite side. But the problem is we can't get close enough to the patrol to try and hook it on because if we're standing in the water we literally sink as you stand in the water so we attach a few ropes together to the hardest point where we can as far as we can get back and we try and snatch the vehicle but this mud is solid we ended up snapping eight recovery ropes in different attempts to try and get this car out it just not, it was not budging but we still attempted I mean it was just us we had no one else there we just tried to get his vehicle out so we attempted, attempted everything we could and that is where I lost my back tail light as well because one of the tow ropes snapped um, and then shot my tow rope uh, shot my tail light out it is incredible the amount of force that those ropes snap back with we did try and take as much safety precautions as we did everyone was standing way clear the patrol's bonnet was up we used soft shackles we had various ropes attached we had safety blankets on, but we had multiple ropes. So we only had a safety blanket on the most dangerous bits where we thought it would happen. But I mean, even with a safety blanket on, we snapped one of the ropes and it shot right out under the safety blanket and hit the cars still. We went through three, three snatch straps. We tried snatching it, but this mud is like suction mud, so it just sucks down. Um, three snatch straps, broke my tail light, the snatch straps swung back. Um, we did have safety ropes on and blankets and stuff, but it still swung back and hit my tail light out, so that is busted. Um, yeah, so the car is still here, still stuck. Yeah, we spent the good day, the good day of Tuesday, just trying to recover this vehicle. We ended up digging uh, like the car out as much as we could, trying to break the seal. The problem with this Tankwa mud is it's, it's clay mud, but it's also slush at the same time, and it creates the suction. It's just pulling the car down, and because the water flowed through the chassis and through the wheels and everything, the mud has got in everywhere, and it's just causing this extra suction to pull down on the vehicle. So we ended up breaking a 20-ton rope as well, snatch rope, but what I learned afterwards is that snatch ropes, they don't have, they lose their ability completely when they get wet. And obviously we were standing in the river, so they were getting wet. Regardless, we couldn't do much about it. So that's also why they ended up snapping so quickly and easily. But then we made a call and we called another backup team, Hunters from Van Ventures and Flex Adventures. They came through, they've got a winch. Flex Adventures uh, has a winch. 
So they brought, or they were brought extra supplies through, but while we were there on the Tuesday, we just ended up digging as much as we could, tried our best. Other camera overheated, so I've switched cameras now. We are now on the GoPro. Uh, it is hot out here today in Wellington. Anyway, so Hein is having another medical emergency and luckily we have our radios with us. So we receive a call, but I can't remember, I don't know exactly how Pier was had dealing with us, Pier and Vessel. They got the calls and so we had to backtrack all the way to the Pastel to their house to help them, assist them where we could. So we race back, we assist with the medical emergency. We make sure that the helicopter can land where it's safe and then they evacuate him out. On the way to the medical emergency, Pierre found a soft spot just next to the patrol. So he sunk his troopy down. So we decided to leave his car there and then on the way back, we decided to do a recovery on his vehicle. Tuesday night, I think about seven o'clock or eight o'clock, the backup team arrives, Hannes them arrive. So here it is to show how soft this mud is. Roland left his car on the other side of the river because he did not want to cross it again because we were supposed to go fetch Hannes and flex them, even them at the putt stall to guide them the roads to get here. We, uh, Roland and I walked back to his car to go and get them at night. He reverses off the track, just his back wheels are off the track as he attempts to turn around and as he, back, as he reverses off, as, as his back wheels leave the hard track we found, they just sink and his back wheels are gone under the mud. Hannes them, our Cape Town crew have arrived. Hannes and Ivan them, they see the lights behind me over there. And we were supposed to get them in the putt stall, but then Roland decided to go get himself stuck. We just pulled out Pierre with his I troopy. I tried to get myself stuck. I, I shouldn't have done the U-turn. You still chose your route. Problematic U-turn. <laughs> but, yeah, he is properly down. Both sides. Almost whole wheel gone. Patrol standing just over there. Harness them over there. There's the guilty one over there. So we're standing there, we can't get out. We try the max tracks under the wheels. He's stuck, his car weighs a lot. Um, and it's just mush. It's mush mud, we can't do anything, he is stuck. Thankfully, Hannes and Ivan them, uh, and Wayne find their way to us. And now we try and recover this vehicle, Roland's vehicle. Hannes tries to drive off the track another time to position himself so that he can tow Roland out, but as he drives into the mud, you just see his car sinking. So he bails from that, luckily manages to get, him, get his way out. And we spent another probably hour trying to recover Roland, and finally we managed to recover him. We had to recover him at odd angles, but we got him out. So we spent the night at Vessel, and then Wednesday morning, our goal was to get this patrol out. We get there nice and early, We've dug out most of the patrol, the water has receded quite a lot and the sun has been baking on the mud so it has dried out a good amount, enough for us to dig even more. So we ended up using four vehicles to recover this patrol. The Mitsubishi Colt from Flex Adventures had a winch. So the winch was hooked up to the patrol with Roland as the anchor vehicle behind him and on the opposite anchor point or opposite recovery point of the patrol, we had Hannes from Flex Adventures and Ivan with his Pajero, what has he got? And Ivan with his vehicle on a tow rope, a solid tow rope, not a snatch. That's the winch car over there, winching, and then these two are on snatch ropes that'll tug every now and then to hopefully that'll break the seal and this will just move the car forward a little bit. That's the plan. The problem with that mud is, or the benefit or how to deal with that mud, let me say it this way, is you must just break that seal. Once you've broken that suction from the mud, the vehicle is quite easily to be able to recover. Um, but with the snatching and even with the tow ropes, we weren't able to break that seal. The, the solid winch pull um, helped with the, I think it was, we, I think we double lined it. But the solid winch pull plus the other two vehicles slowly doing a little tug helped to break the seal and we managed to pop the car out. And then we had to tow it back to Vessel's house to leave there for cleaning and for further repairs. So patrol has been successfully recovered, but now we have to get back. And we thought, okay, cool, we'll just drive the same way back we came. Little did we know that we've driven it to pieces now with extra vehicles coming in, that the out will be a lot more difficult than the in. We finally managed to save the patrol, which was there somewhere. Now we're trying to make our back our way back over the river and we have three cars stuck. One, two, three, and two recovery vehicles on that side. And I'm just waiting my turn over here see if we can make it through. Uh, we uh, did 
got the patrol out and then um, the rest soft. managed to get stuck. <laughs> so we are at point A again. Point A, new day. Yeah. It's all fun and games. So we get across the river, Roland gets across, Gareth almost gets across, he gets himself a little stuck, Roland tries to reverse to get him out, he sort of gets stuck, eventually those, those two get themselves out, Hannes tries a different route, he ends up getting stuck, Ivan tries a different route, he ends up getting stuck, at one point we had four of our six vehicles, four of us six or seven vehicles, we had stuck on various points, and as soon as the one tries to drive off the track to position themselves to recover the next one, they also get stuck. So we finally after another I think two three hours of struggling we got all we got all ourselves out we had max jacks we had winches the winch ended up going we lost more snatch ropes um, but we managed to get everyone across and through and then we had Vessel bring his other small Pajero across so that he at least had one vehicle he left it on the other side of the new river so that he could at least move around not be stranded on his farm again. home so we made ourselves wait to the putt stall uh, had a quick drink refreshment there and then headed home after I think it was about 36 hours in the mud and in the putt stall just absolutely so tired of mud the cars were covered in mud we were covered in mud we ended up digging for hours to get the patrol out we had to dig all the other cars out snatch ropes attack we were in this mud and there's the soggy mud but yeah, we made our way out, we were able to save, uh, get the patrol out, um, but they had even more rain falling, a little bit more, but not much. But like I said, the rivers were still in full flood. It was a lot of damage that came through the Tankwa. Uh, it caused new rivers to form, uh, and new trenches to form now at least. The rivers have dried up by now. But it was, it was, it was a true disaster that happened. It was a lot of water that came through there. It was incredible to see, sad to see. And sad to see how much of the Tankwa residents were stranded. We then, after we got home, we posted a bit on social media and then we got more outreach from other farmers and residents in the Tankwa who have also been stranded and are still stranded. It is now, the rain came down on Saturday. It is now Wednesday, let's say Thursday, where we started getting the messages of other residents saying that they are running out of supplies. Is there any way we can come back or some of us can send some parcels through to more people coming through? as they cannot get off their farms, off their property because there is no more, there is no roads, it's deep, they don't have the right vehicles to get through and things like that. So Sunday, another team of us head through for the day um, with the help of Terrain Tamer. We had extra supplies and Nuts and Bolts donated a lot of supplies which we took through. So it was myself once again, Michael with his Hilux, uh, Troopy Tim with his cruiser and Nikki from Terrain Tamer with their patrol us four headed in once more with loads of more supplies for those extra uh, property owners who needed some supplies who requested some supplies and thanks to the donations from those people i mentioned 
uh, for getting us the supplies. So Sunday we headed in once more. We headed to Swoutkorp's guest farm where the entrance was washed away. We managed to get to the farm or to her to the camping section of the farm where she get, uh, met with, up with us and then we handed over some supplies there. It was quite a drive to get in there, quite muddy and some odd angles as the main road to her farm turned into a river. So it's just heavy washouts and mud. But we managed to get some supplies there. Then we went to Demont, where Johan from Demont. We dropped some supplies there. The Olifant River comes right past their farm and it was in absolute full flood. It was super high, super strong. So for a week, basically, they've been stuck on their farm. The only way across to the other side was via a boat. But by now the water has subsided, but it was still about above knee level when we walked through it and it's still flowing. It wasn't flowing that strong, but it's still quite deep for and a big section to try and attempt to drive it, especially with the mud being quite soggy still on both sides. But as we get there, we drop them some supplies. We walk the supplies across the river to this car standing on the other side. And then there was a vehicle standing in the river there. It was visitors on their farm or on their campsite who decided to leave before more rain comes down on, on, over the past weekend. And as they were in the riverbed, this is the story I heard, I, I cannot confirm how correct it is. As they were crossing through the river, a flash flood came down and hit them uh, where they had to evacuate the vehicle through the windows because the water rose so quickly that they couldn't open the doors. So they evacuated out the window, they had children with them and dogs. Thankfully, they managed to get out safe and they got air, air evacuated out of there but the vehicle unfortunately got caught in the flash flood uh, it was a Hilux with a trailer and that absolutely just got wrecked by the water the water it luckily stayed in position it stayed in the river but the water was roof height it went through the car through the cabin through the canopy through the trailer it was mud inside everywhere Something what I've never got expect. Woo! There's come the last one. The one is in trouble. So we managed to pull this baby out. Oh, my word, this is my first time looking inside. This is going to be, there's actual mud on the top. This thing must have been flowing through here. No, oh, there's a line on the window. On the other side, there's a line on the window. Oh, small children were in this thing when it happened, eh? Whoa. This is crazy. It just shows you guys, be careful with your water crossing. Be careful with your water crossing. There's actual mud. This thing's full of mud inside. No, it's a write-off. Down here. With all the ECUs and lighting loops. So this is the back door, and that's the line where the water was up to and flowing. Now that washed through. Open up the air cleaner box with you. That's right, there's another clip. Oh, it's this side. Hey, dry. No, it's fine. <laughs> engine motor. Okay. If it drove it there, then the engine's fine. Sure. It's because he had a flatbed coming to rescue the vehicle, but there was no way this flatbed would have been able to get this vehicle out of the river bed where it was standing. The vehicle was so heavy due to the amount of mud and water inside this vehicle still. We hooked up three vehicles. It was myself, the patrol and the troopy. We hooked up with tow ropes. I drove in as far as I could uh, and even I myself struggled to get there so we had to put max tracks under just to get me some grip and then we hooked up three vehicles and we towed this thing out. Um, it wasn't that difficult but it, it needed a lot of power to pull out. You could feel the weight of this car was insane. Just to open the bonnet of that vehicle needed two people of the amount of mud that was inside the bonnet lining. So yeah, we managed to rescue that vehicle, put it onto dry land, onto a hard surface where the flatbed could come and get it later the week. And then we headed to the Putstall once more 
to survey the patrol and then we had a uh, vessels patrol where we did find that the clutch had seemed to have a lot of mud in it and it wasn't engaging and it was basically ruined by the mud. The mud has just chewed the clutch away. So that is how we ended our Tankwa mission. On the Sunday afternoon, we had one more drink at the Pat Stall before we headed home. We are thankful for all the donations we had and we are thankful that we were able to help the people in the Tankwa. We are always in the Tankwa as a 4x4 community and a lot of events happen in the Tankwa and we, they are always so catering to us and so helpful to us when we're there, making sure we are fine. When we get punctures, they are there to help. So it was nice to give back, to help them, to when they were in a situation where they couldn't help us, where we could help them. Um, but yes, it was, it was an absolute mission. It was fun looking back at it. A lot of our cars came out with damage there as well. The mud, mud just ruins a car. I learned the hard way. Yes, Henry from Zombie Off-Road always tells me that and now I believe him. Um, I'll still end up in the mud though. But it was fun. It was an awesome experience. We are again thankful for the donations we had to throw into the Tankwa to give the uh, property owners, get them through that week, the tough week, and to be able to be there and rescue and see the Tankwa in that situation. It is most likely a once in a lifetime moment we had there. But yeah, it was a great adventure. I hope you guys like this content. We tried to film as much as we could, but we were there to help. So a lot of times we just put the camera down and assisted, um, but at least I can make this bit of a video for you guys. So hopefully there is more adventures to come. Hopefully not as much mud as this one, but there's definitely more adventures to come. Cheers.